from potholes to massive uh, traffic jams. The IT city of Bengaluru is facing a crisis that uh, many residents feel is spiraling out of control. In fact, uh, tragedy struck in the heart of Bengaluru during recent rains with a building collapse claiming lives of eight people. So also another shocking incident, Vedant, of a woman losing her life while attempting to dodge a pothole as well. So clearly crumbling infrastructure, civic apathy is what is being witnessed in the IT capital, Bengaluru. Absolutely. And what is uh, Bengaluru's perennial problem? Well, nightmarish traffic. In fact, massive traffic jams led to people leaving their vehicles and walking to their destination as well. There was a lot of outrage that we saw in those viral videos. As the city grapples with these pressing issues, many questions arise, Radhika. Um, you know, it is uh, the infrastructure overhaul that is the need of the hour as far as the IT capital is concerned. And what has really happened to the once proud brand Bengaluru? This, of course, has potholes, Radhika is a big nuisance as far as Bengaluru is concerned. Look at those potholes. I mean, uh, so much for those back-to-back -back deadlines that the Congress government, that uh, the Deputy Chief Minister himself set for uh, uh, the government. And despite all of those deadlines, the potholes are yet to be filled. And these are extremely posh areas that we're talking about. That's right. Massive traffic jams leading to people leaving their vehicles, potholes, as you can see in those visuals. And yes, as you rightly pointed out, Vedant, uh, there had been deadlines in order to fill the potholes, repair those roads, but clearly none of it has happened despite filling up of potholes. Uh, you know, the same situation every year, which uh, talks about the substandard material perhaps being used in repairing of uh, those uh, roads. So clearly infrastructure mess there as a result of uh, uh, rains leading to deaths, leading to injuries and leading to a lot of inconvenience for an average, uh, uh, you know, citizen of uh, Bangalore. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's not just one isolated problem. It's a larger question of civic apathy as far as the IT capital is concerned. Um, of course, the potholes uh, we've talked about, but also, uh, you know, it rains for just several hours and it leads the, uh, you know, it brings the city to its knees completely. In fact, we saw in the past uh, three, four days, extremely posh areas were completely waterlogged. People were having to wade through almost waist deep water. Um, you know, in key areas of the IT capital. And as we were discussing earlier as well, Radhika, what has happened to brand Bengaluru? Has it been washed away? Who is accountable? Of course, the Congress government says that the municipal authorities there swung into action. But the fact is that deaths are being reported because of civic apathy. And that's a serious concern. In fact, Radhika, this is not something that's restricted to Bengaluru, though, of course, we're putting the focus on that. But it's also the larger question uh, that faces our metropolitan cities, whether it's Mumbai or Delhi we see a similar problem. There seems to be a pattern uh, where metropolitan cities are completely brought to a standstill every time it rains for several hours on end. Absolutely. The cities, uh, be it Bengaluru, Mumbai or Delhi, grappling with these kind of issues uh, uh, every year, especially during the time of monsoons. In Mumbai, of course, we see immense waterlogging uh, during monsoons, uh, leading uh, to not just traffic jams, but also building collapses. That is something that we see every year during monsoon, something that Bengaluru also witnessed this time uh, 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 building collapse and under construction building collapsing uh, leading to deaths and of course uh, several other issues as well we did see that massive long uh, traffic jam people leaving their vehicles walking for kilometers to their destinations be it offices or homes uh, it is that bad in uh, Bengaluru uh, post rain so uh, of course uh, Severe waterlogging, as we mentioned, in multiple areas, especially in northern Bengaluru, overflowing for the first time in 17 years. The lake there overflowing for the first time in 17 years, inundating so many low-lying areas in the IT capital, Vedant. And this, of course, Radhika, as remember, last year around at the same time, we were discussing the water crisis that uh, Bengaluru faced. And that's also part of the civic apathy question. Who is really responsible? Well, of course, the Congress and the BJP sort of blaming each other. Uh, the Congress saying that the BJP has been in power and the municipal authorities did nothing to curb the uh, civic, ap you know, civic menace there as far as the IT capital is concerned. The Congress uh, blaming the BJP. The BJP, on the other hand, saying that the Congress government is only uh, sort of making false promises, particularly as far as the potholes were concerned. In fact, extremely dramatic pictures coming in. And as far as the uh, uh, traffic situation is concerned, uh, Radhika, 
and Bengaluru. That is something that is the IT capital's perennial problem and there seems to be no solution um, you know as far as streamlining of traffic is concerned um, you know and there have been so many reports talking about traffic load uh, not being eased despite so many expressways, highways coming uh, coming up. So, it is a it is certainly a multifaceted problem. But let me introduce our guests uh, uh, this morning Radhika Daina Emanuel a Bengaluru citizen also director in an IT company is with us. We will also be joined by Arvind Uni an urban planner. Uh, thanks very much ma'am for being with us. My first question to you well as somebody who lives in Bengaluru you know who who contributes to brand Beng Bengaluru as it were you know how do you see uh, what's happening in the city crumbling infrastructure from potholes to waterlogged areas to uh, cracks on roads to encroachments um, you know it's very painful to see the brand Bengaluru being washed away this way yes and uh, you have summarized it so well you know See, rains are an act of God, but that can be controlled. But here what we are seeing are the symptoms, you know, the acts of human. You are seeing collapsing infrastructure. You are seeing corruption in the infrastructure. There are delayed projects. There are a number of abandoned flyovers and roadworks. The potholes on the road, they are the size of craters, you know. And the worst thing is the citizens have raised their voice time and again. Right. What do we need so that the authority take responsibility, take accountability for these infrastructures? And they are all taxpaying residents who are stranded on the roads for hours. There are people who have taken nine hours on the road. Right. And we hate feeling this helpless on the roads. There are patients on the road. There are kids spending hours on the traffic. I'm sure that if the infrastructure is improved, there should, there should be a proper waste management system. All the stormwater drains are blocked with waste. You have your construction debris, which is blocking the stormwater drain. So where is a thing called infrastructure in this whole brand Bangalore, you know? And Bangalore citizens feel that the corruption is so high that we don't have an authority who will do an honest work, right? Isn't it time the authorities work on changing this perception, you know, bringing, building, as we said, a better brand Bangalore. I'm sure the taxes collected from this small, small city is sufficient or more to build a better brand Bangalore. Right, Diana. I mean, you are a citizen of Bengaluru. You're a resident of Bengaluru. And of course, you travel back and forth to work. Uh, tell me, what are the biggest challenges for you as a resident during, especially during uh, this period of heavy rainfall? Is it waterlogged streets? Uh, is it the road? Is, are these the potholes, uh, bridges? I mean, take us through what is it that you face on an everyday basis, especially uh, during rains? And uh, what do you think needs to be done as an average citizen, as somebody who goes to work? What do you think needs to be done? Perhaps as a citizen, what do you think is a, a solution for this? See, these potholes existed before the rains. It's not something created only during the rain time. When an orange alert or a yellow alert is declared, you know, states need to take certain measures. There is, you know, there was period, at least a week period before which this alert has been declared. Isn't there a responsibility to clear the stormwater drains? Isn't there a responsibility to have some patchwork? Because that is the only work which gets done on the roads. So the whole infrastructure which is failing, you know, the whole potholes which are there on the road, the whole, uh, I would say, in Bangalore, you have to find the road, you know, because everywhere there is patrol, potholes you will see abandoned flyovers. You know, I, I don't know where is the planning going when you start a flyover and it is abandoned for three years. That means the work is not finished. So that whole area is in a geopartized state, right? So there are so many points of breakage of the infrastructure and these are basic urban planning, you know. They are not complex issues which we want to solve. These are basic urban planning issues which can be solved. and. As you said, right, there are lake beds which are converted and happily occupied by builders where the water cannot accumulate. Again, those are bigger projects. You cannot challenge any of them. But there are things which can be done on a smaller scale. And I, I really want to know what is the accountability path here, you know. We race to the, be it a panchayat road, be it a BBMP road, be it a, a state highway. 
the hmm. conditions are the same. In fact, Arvind, Arvind only is an urban planner also with us and I think perhaps he would be able to answer some of the questions, Diana, that you have raised. Arvind, do you think there needs to be some sort of an overhaul you know, in, in how we are looking at a planned city like Bengaluru? I mean, more and more flyovers, expressways coming up, but the infrastructure is clearly not able to sort of uh, support uh, the traffic load, support the kind of developmental works that we are undertaking in Bengaluru. I uh, absolutely agree and uh, happy to be here to share my thoughts. So firstly, I would just, um, what do you say, distinguish between what's happening in our cities and, and this is just not about Bangalore. Of course, right now what we are seeing is 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 uh, complete chaos and mayhem in Bangalore. But the same thing has been repeated all across in, in all the cities that we can think of, right? Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and uh, during the summers, uh, heat waves. So what we are seeing, I would not reduce it to just uh, infrastructure uh, not catching up to development kind of a problem. Of course, it is part of a uh, part of an issue. But what we are seeing is something that that all Indian cities are facing, and it is called uh, climate change and climate crisis. So whenever we have such a such a flood, such a heat wave, uh, such cold winters. You know, the easiest step for us to say is that, look, one, that nature can't be controlled. Uh, it's something that's unprecedented. Second, we say that, look, stop gap arrangements, infrastructure is not kept pace with development, so on and so forth. But fundamentally, what is going wrong with our cities is that we do not have a strong fundamental uh, urban governance lens to, to, to uh, plan for our cities. So just to give you a very good example, sure. example number one is that ma'am Diana was just before me, the speaker, I think Diana was talking about accountability. Hmm. Bangalore has not had civic elections for the last four or five years. I mean, who do you then fix accountability to? The folks who are supposed to be right, uh, right. handling your, your cities and, you know, such crisis, they are not there. So they are not accountable. So that... Point number one is that our urban local bodies are not equipped to hmm. deal with this. And that seems and to be the case across municipalities, isn't it, Radhika, given the fact that we are seeing this across uh, Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru. But thanks very much for joining us with the latest there.